Welcome to Special Stage and welcome to round five of the 2014 RAIS BTRDA Rally Championship. If I was to count up the number of local drivers on our leaderboard today, I'd probably need both hands and a little bit more. And local knowledge brings local confidence, so we can guarantee you top rally action. And of course, some new names and new faces rejoining the championship at this round. And Stephen Petch is out in that brand new R5 Plus Fiesta. Loads of great things to watch out for today. We'll bring you all the action here on Special Stage. The Dukeries Rally takes place in and around Sherwood Forest. Usually faced with dry and dusty conditions, this year would be a whole different challenge for the crews. After problems on the previous round, it will be a welcomed early lead for Steve Perez and Paul Spooner in that focus. But the advantage was only three seconds at this stage. It could have been much more, but the pair have a big moment at one of the chicanes and are lucky to come away with only lost time and no major damage. David Weston was back and with Kirsty Riddick alongside once again. Two good scores already this season were being backed up with a second place start this weekend. And another returning face, Jamie Anderson, makes an appearance this weekend for his local event. This time with Chris Brooks alongside, and despite being away from the seat for so long, it was a great start in third. For Patrick Naylor and Ian Lawrence, it would be fourth, just one second behind Anderson for the Group N lead at this stage. Jim McNeil and Tom Hughes hadn't had the best of events at round four, so their fifth place start would be welcome, but of course, at this stage, couldn't be celebrated or counted on just yet, particularly in these conditions. And it would be a bit of bad luck for Stephen Petch and Ian Windrus in that new Fiesta. Unable to start the car again after a stall, the pair lose time and end these opening stages in sixth on the leaderboard. Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy come into this round in a fantastic championship position. And it's consistent scores that got them there. So seventh overall wasn't setting the world alight, but it was ideal for now. <laughs> six right done cut, 80, six right, then 64 right slowing past lanes, and 60 slowing, so for yeah. 60 slowing oh, turn, square left, don't cut. Ah, sorry. 250, over finish, and then it's flat crest mid long. It would be a welcome return to the stages for the Mitsubishi World Rally Car of Tristan Bailey and James Howe. Not quite lying at the top of the results with their eighth overall, but there were still three quarters of the event to go. Problems in the opening stage for Roland Llewellyn and Jamie Edwards would put them a little further down than they would have liked to be. But ninth place wasn't a bad start considering the conditions and the circumstances. And rounding out our top 10 would be another of the locals, Ben Cressy and Mark Swallow sit in 10th place in the Subaru at this early stage. Just outside our top 10 would be newly registered Tom Preston and Jamie Forrest, lying third place in the B13 class for now in 11th. But there's bad luck in the early stages for Jan Budge and Fiona Skerritt. Lying in 17th overall, they go off the road in stage three and damage the car too much to continue in the rally. Now it's time to head to the two-wheel drive Silver Star category here at the Duke Cruise. As you can see, it's definitely Matthew Robinson weather. Let's see how they got on in the first few stages today. On to the Silver Star now then, and for Matthew Robinson and Sam Collis, it would be the early lead. And it was a good one too, 29 seconds at the end of stage three for the pair. Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine were back for another go in the Escort. And it was second place for now, not quite on the pace of Robinson up ahead, but of course not completely happy with the car, as we know. 
Nick Dobson and Steve Pugh make a good start here on the Duke Reese. Third place at this stage and 18 seconds behind McDowell. And it was a good start too for Tony Williams and Karen Phelps. Not the best of looks so far this season for the pair, so this fourth place start was certainly a step in the right direction. Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock start the day as they meant to go on, with fifth place. The conditions were certainly slippery, but of course, it was the same for everyone to coin that classic rally cliche. The second of the Dobsons in the top of the Silver Star now as we see David Dobson and Phil Sandham take up sixth place for now in the historic escort. And James and Kev Hutchings return to the championship after a steady run on the Plains Rally. They lie in seventh position after stage three in the Nova. Mike Harris and Stephen Davey come to this round with a run of bad luck behind them. But it was a good steady start in eighth place for the pair in that Puma. Tony Simpson, meanwhile, with Ian Bevan alongside, starts the day in ninth. Really struggling with the conditions on the stages, a dramatic change from the dust they'd had at the previous round in Wales. And rounding out the top 10 at this stage would be Philip Clark and Ian Jones. The Escort Mark 1 pair were enjoying the stages this weekend. Unfortunately, once again, we lose Kit and Tim Lee in stage 3 due to engine failure. An unfortunate end, but at least this time they pass the cameras. Three stages in then, and the results look like this. Two more stages and no change in the lead for Steve Perez and Paul Spooner. Apart from, that is, the advantage. They now lie 21 seconds ahead going into service. Steve, local event there has to be good for a little bit extra confidence, doesn't it? Well, but it's such a tricky event. You just make a mistake. We made a big mistake on uh, the third stage uh, in Clipston. We were just coming over a... Uh, uh, three left, fast, fast left-hand corner, 150, and there's a chicane, and it's just so slippery. Yeah, the car just wouldn't stop, and we've gone straight on through the chicane, hit a big log like that, and uh, then spun, and then had to go handbrake it round. So we've lost quite a bit of time in there, uh, but it's very, very tricky out there. That said, though, the pace still looks good at the front there. Yeah, I know. I know Dave Weston's going really well, and uh, Steve Petch. It's a shame he had a problem with his car, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah on the second stage. But yeah, he's he's, he's it's a quick rally, it's a great rally, there's some great drivers behind me, so I've just got to see, well, see how we're doing. Well, as your slogan goes, you're definitely staying in the game despite those problems. We'll catch up with you later. Cheers, Paul. There would, though, be change in second as we see Stephen Petch and Ian Windrus move up into that position following their earlier problems. Things going a lot better now for this Fiesta pair. Stephen, brand new car, how's the confidence? It's a brand new car, it's not the conditions to have a brand new car, and that's for certain, it's uh, very slippy out there. Um, it's good though, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't say I'm completely confident at the minute, but... You've I'm got a few honest. problems, haven't you? Yeah, we, at the second stage, the, the car basically just cut out, and out into a tight corner, and I couldn't, uh, wouldn't restart, so must have been sat 20 seconds, I think. Um, so that made the job even more difficult today, but we'll just plug along, so yeah. I don't even know where we are, we're just, just having a bit of fun. Unfortunately for David Weston and Kirsty Riddick, and off in the second loop of stages sees them drop some crucial time and into third position. But that third place was actually an identical time to Petch 
overall. So it was tight going into service. Dave, how was the morning? You're looking like it's not been the best of mornings. No, it was horrible that, that last two stages. I didn't really enjoy the first two either, but that last two was horrible. It was just like, grip. Uh, it was just like driving on sheet ice. We went off on that last one there. Lost a good bit of time, so hey ho. You probably don't come down to Nottinghamshire in the summer and expect these kind of conditions. Oh, it's a nightmare. It's not. It's no fun at all. But hey ho. But you've all got it the same. So what's the plan this afternoon? Keep on the pace. Just have to try and keep it on the pace and try and keep it on the road as well. I know it's the same for everyone, but uh, it's there's no fun in it. Jamie Anderson and Chris Brooks would be another pair to drop down the leaderboard in these stages. Not so much based on stage times, but just to move down one place due to the move up the results by Petch. They lie fourth place for now. Jamie, home event, you're smiling, you're obviously enjoying yourself. Took 12 out of Patrick Naylor, I think, in that last stage. Yeah, yeah, we had a good time, really. Um, you know, we've come back from being, we haven't drove the car for eight months. Um, so, yeah, basically, it was a good time through there. We thought it was actually quite bad. It was quite slippy, quite wet. We thought it was a bit untidy. But to come out after the stage and being 12 odd seconds in front of him, you know, it amazed us really. Yeah, sometimes when these cars do look out of shape, they're generally going quite fast, aren't they? Yeah, that's always the case unless you're sliding on mud. Um, you know, so we tried to keep it as fast as we can. And yet again, you know, we just tried, we thought we'd come in the morning and we'd be well off the pace. But coming now, coming into lunch and we're actually ahead of Group N, you know, we're quite impressed with that. And unfortunately for previous fifth place Jim McNeil and Tom Hughes, it will be the end of the road in stage five when they hit a tree and are unable to continue. Just like the rest, Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence would move down a place on the results to make room for Patch. Still second place in the Group N battle to Anderson though, crucially at this stage. 15 seconds the difference now. Patrick, conditions less than ideal, but how's the pace? The, the pace was good. We're just having a discussion with Jamie. He took 12 out of us on that last one and can't quite work out where, but um, it's very slippy, very slippy indeed. But it is good fun. Um, and so we're just going to have to try harder this afternoon. Jamie likes this rally though. Yeah, it's his home event, but then technically I suppose it's our home, home event as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we've always enjoyed coming here. So we, like I say, we're just going to have to try harder. And for Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy, it would be a move the right way of the results into sixth. But this wasn't helped with this stall on stage four, costing the pair a handful of seconds. Russ, it's a four-wheel drive kind of a day out there. How's it been inside here? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, pretty good. We made a lot of mistakes, really, but I'm sure everyone probably is. But yeah. Still annoying. Yeah, what's the plan for this afternoon then? Try and make a bit of time back? No, I don't think um, I don't think it's a day you can really do that. We'll just have to keep going as we are and hope other people make mistakes, I think. I yeah. don't know. We'll see. Tristan Bailey and James Howe step up into seventh. Things going a bit better for the pair now, though a windscreen wiper problem this morning really hadn't helped their cause. Tristan, it's great to see you back out in this Mitsubishi. How's it going today? Yeah, wet and slippery, but I'm sure that's what everyone's saying. It um, yeah, it's nice to be back out on the gravel, but uh, yeah, a bit of a baptism of fire with the conditions as they are. A um, little bit of a uh, little bit of a slip with the uh, windscreen wipers. They decided not to work, so that was slightly, slightly difficult. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's um, yeah, we're taking it slow and steady and just making sure we finish. Roland Llewellyn and Jamie Edwards were one of many crews struggling to stop for the corners spending a lot of time bouncing off the banks but at least they were still going and in eighth place now Roland it looks hard work out there yeah it's very slippy it's slippier than the YG I think I mean it's really? the cars we're going off on every other corner it feels like but but having fun yeah yeah it's good practice good good car control if you can, if you can get to the end Ben Cressy and Mark Swallow move up a place into ninth now they lose a little time on this section here but nothing result changing at the moment. Ben, a lot of local men out this weekend all looking for a good result. You, of course, are one of them. Local event for you. Yeah, yeah, re was really, really looking forward to it. A little bit different to last year, uh, four-wheel drive instead of two-wheel drive, um, but, uh, but still as enjoyable. A um, bit more grip last year than this year, though. Yeah. How has the switch gone? 
Um, it's going all right. Um, I don't know where we are, but uh, it just it, nothing turns in. Um, you sort of press the brake, it locks up. You press the accelerator, it just pushes on, doesn't turn in. So um, we don't know what to do, but uh, I think neat and tidy is the way forward um, and, uh, and hopefully get it to finish. And a move up the results now to 10th for Tom Preston and Jamie Forrest. But the pair were also getting it wrong on this corner in stage four. Very mean looking Evo this weekend, all in matte black with no bit decals. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it was supposed to be finished on the uh, last week, but unfortunately the graphics people were out of time, so it's a uh, stealth bomber at the minute. It's all right, it's that muddy, you wouldn't be able to read them anyway. How's it going? Uh, not bad, yeah, with the first, it was the first time in the car. Uh, we bought it a couple of weeks ago off uh, Quintin Mill, and um, so I've not been in it before. I had an Evo 6 before that. First two stages were good, and then afterwards the diffs were playing up. It's um, it was just like it went all just rear wheel drive basically, so not great, but we're getting there. Good fun all the same. Yeah, yeah, brilliant fun. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it's been really good, uh, really good learning curve, and it's, you can tell the car's a quick guy, you know. So I'm looking forward to this afternoon. And Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh, meanwhile, round out the B13 podium places at this stage with 11th in the results, looking good so far and entertaining the spectators as always in that Metro 6R4. Unfortunately, we lose Martin and Dawn England in these stages with a transmission problem. Amongst others, it has to be said, the conditions really testing the crews on these stages this weekend. Back to Silver Star then, and no change at the top for Matthew Robinson and Sam Collis, but they do extend their lead considerably now, up to a minute and a half. Matthew, all reports that I've heard say that you were on it in these first few stages. I was trying to be, yeah. No, the, uh, I know some people will be mourning it slippy, but yeah, I was loving it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were up every bank in the was. Uh, I think we've had our money's worth, to be fair to say. I think that's how Matthew Robinson goes rallying, isn't it? Are you happy with the pace? Yeah, yeah, no, it was good, yeah. And, you know, the last one on the tarmac then, part, uh, part, I think it was Portland, we scared ourselves a couple of times, but uh, we were happy, yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, the tyres, uh, the Perret, we've we've swapped. Um, we were on soft to start with, then we went to medium. You know, the Pirelli tyres are working mega as well. The grips, uh, is, it's massive. So yeah, we're dead happy. Although not getting any closer to the lead, Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine were managing to edge out a small advantage of their own in second. Now up to 34 seconds, back to third place. <laughs> Alan, how have these first few stages treated you this morning? Um, I think we had the wrong tyres. We had open tyre on the back because of the rain. and uh, We've been getting too hot and having to gather it up. Uh, we've been off a couple of times in the ditches, but everybody's going to be from that because the surfaces are pretty tricky, right in the braking. Yep. Nobody's very used to these conditions here on the Dukeries, are they? No, not really, no. Yeah, you've got to be brave in the tarmac uh, and, and when it's wet like this, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the tiles are only the width of the road and the trees hanging over. Uh, uh, it's scary stuff. And this still is a relatively new venture for you, of course, from the cadet last season. How's it been going in the escort? Uh, crap. <laughs> It'll never be a cadet. <laughs> Are we going to see that back out? Yes. Yes. 100%. And in that third place is Nick Dobson and Steve Pugh. The pair not feeling the car was running quite right, but it wasn't stopping them rounding out our podium places at this stage. We're hearing there's a story of tyres out there, particularly in a rear-wheel drive car. Is that your story too? Uh, yeah, I've never had so many overshoots and uh, off the off the track in my life, I don't think. And uh, as you can hear, the car's not not running too well either. So, well, it's, I mean, they're enjoyable stages, quick, but it's just judging that speed and the stopping distances are so... Yeah. Uh, some corners you can pull up quick, others you just sail on pass and then back to back up again so a good morning for our cameramen then probably uh, hopefully yeah yeah yeah. yeah thank you and we now see a move up to fourth for david dobson and phil sander the pair finding a little more pace in the later stages thanks in part to a change of tires it's going all right we just had like wonder steer in the first three or four stages uh, yeah. we swapped to new tyres on that last stage and it was transformed. It, yeah. I, I think it was a bit drier on the last stage as well. So we're, we're okay, we're going. And I we're think tyres might win or lose this rally for many people today. Are you happy with the pace? 
The pace, yeah, I think so. We had a half spin on the first stage, maybe five or six seconds. Other than that, we've been okay. In the last stage, we were, we were a bit more on it. I'm happy with it, yeah. Good luck for the next loop. Thank you. For James and Kevin Hutchings, things were going the right way too. They step up the results a few places now into fifth place in that Nova. And it's a drop to sixth for Tony Williams and Karen Phelps. But this wouldn't be the case this afternoon. The pair retiring in service with gearbox problems. Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan, meanwhile, were moving the right way of the results. And if nothing else, the pair were enjoying getting the Fiesta sideways, even if that really wasn't the plan in these slippery stages. Unfortunately, we lose Mike Harris and Stephen Davey in stage four when the engine fails on the Puma. An earlier spin meant that it would be down to eight for Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock in these stages, struggling with the pace a little in the Escort. And thanks to retirements, Philip Clark and Ian Jones managed to move up a place into ninth now on the leaderboard in their Escort. So rounding out the top 10 now are John Taylor and Lindsay Watson, 21 seconds behind Clark at this stage in the rally. So midway through the Dukeries rally and the results look like this. On to the next few stages after service then, and no change in the lead still, as Steve Perez and Paul Spooner hold off any further advance to keep that number one spot. It's more of the same too for Stephen Petch and Ian Windrus in the new car. The realisation that it was slightly slower than the older generation WRC cars was showing now, but that just means that they need to keep trying. Unfortunately, we lose David Weston and Kirsty Riddick in stage seven. Things were going well for the pair up to this point, but this won't help their championship campaign. For local man Jamie Anderson and Chris Brooks, though, this does mean a move up to third once more. And of course, they still lead the way in the Group N battle. And second in that Group N battle were still Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence. The pair moving a place up the leaderboard with the retirement of Weston to lie in fourth place now, 15 seconds behind Anderson. Meanwhile, Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy would be third of those N4 class runners. A slightly larger gap of 24 seconds between them and Naylor as they lie in fifth on the leaderboard. Twenty left entry chicane. Left entry chicane into a square right. Two hundred. Turn square right narrows tightens. One seventy over bump dip. Flat crest jump mid sixty. Flat crest jump mid again, 150, flat crest long, middle over crossroads and 80 slowing, kink two left square right. The difference back to fourth in class 
and sixth overall Roland Llewellyn and Jamie Edwards was almost a minute now. But given the earlier problems, it would be welcomed just getting to the finish. And sixth overall was a great place to be. Things were now a lot smoother for Tom Preston and Jamie Forrest. They moved the right way of the results into seventh place. 29 seconds behind Llewellyn with just two stages remaining. Unfortunately though, it's not plain sailing right through the leaderboard. We lose Tristan Bailey and James Howe in the Mitsubishi WRC as the intercooler breaks after service. For Ben Cressy and Mark Swallow, it was ninth. Moving a place with the retirement ahead, but there wasn't much to be gained on the stages. There were only seven seconds between them and Preston now though. Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh move up into the top 10 now in the 6R4. Things going well, although they do lie a minute and a half back from Cressy at this stage. So rounding out the top 10 now would be Tony Carinanti and Martin Oscarin, making their way slowly of the results, just over 30 seconds behind Smith. Matthew Robinson and Sam Collis continue to extend their lead in the Silver Star over these stages, ending stage eight with over two minutes of an advantage now. A lead, however, that would still see Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine in second place. Unable to gain any time on the leaders, they do have a minute advantage in that second place themselves. And that advantage is still over Nick Dobson and Steve Pugh. The pair getting to grips with the slippery conditions a little more as the day goes on. They lie in third place. No change either for David Dobson and Phil Sandham as they remain in fourth and of course lead the way in the H2 class historic runners. There wouldn't be any change for James and Kevin Hutchins either as they remain in fifth place in the Nova, the pair 27 seconds behind Dobson. And it's good news for Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock. They're on the move the right way up the leaderboard too. Second half of the day, they now lie sixth place. Without their earlier one minute penalty, it could have seen them in fourth now. And it's a drop of one position for Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan in these stages to lie in seventh now, just 17 seconds behind Edwards, just ahead of them. <laughs> Philip Clark and Ian Jones gain a place due to the retirement of Williams above them. They end stage eight in eighth position and second in that B10 class. And it's the same story for John Taylor and Lindsay Watson as they move up a place into ninth now and third in the B10 class. So rounding out the top 10 now would be Nathan O'Connor 
and Jessica Rogan. The pair were, however, a good way behind Taylor at this stage. So with just two stages remaining here in the Nottinghamshire stages of the Dukeries, here's how the results are shaping up. On to the final two stages then, and a rundown now of the final results. Still rounding out the top 10 in the Silver Star at the end of the rally would be Nathan O'Connor and Jessica Rogan in the C2. There would be no change in ninth for John Taylor and Lindsay Watson, the pair taking third in the B10 class as well. And Philip Clark with Ian Jones end the event just six seconds ahead of Taylor to take second in the class and eighth overall. Unfortunately for David Dobson and Phil Sandham, it will be a slip down the results from fourth into seventh in the final stages, but they do still take the H2 class trophy. Tony Simpson and Ian Bevan managed to gain one place in these final stages to take sixth in the Fiesta. And of course, the N3 class win as well. No change for James and Kevin Hutchings in the Nova as they end the rally in fifth overall, a place that was good enough to get them the B10 class win here at round five. Sean Edwards and Gavin Haycock have a final push towards the end of the rally and finish in fourth place. A great result after a penalty and a slow start. There wouldn't be though any change at the top of the results as Nick Dobson and Steve Pugh remain third. A great result for the pair and their best result this season, taking the B11 class win to boot. Unable to catch the runaway leaders today, Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine are forced to settle for second. But they would have surely taken that if you'd offered it to them earlier this morning. So that means for Matthew Robinson and Sam Collis, it was back to winning ways. And another maximum score to add to their growing list. The pair have a big lead in the championship now, as well as lying an impressive second amongst the Gold Star Championship points. So at the end of the event, Here's a reminder of the Silver Star results. Matthew, Sam, I think a few of the four-wheel drive guys were talking about you earlier today, which is a sign that you're going pretty quickly. I think fourth fastest time through one of the stages overall. Yeah, the, the, this morning the stages were mega though, Paul, you know, and we got the luxury of going before the four-wheel drive, so, and they're known for eating up down here because it's yeah. really sandy, so this morning stages were the best, so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was good really, so, this afternoon was a different ball game, yeah. the last two have been terrible really, you'd be better with a Land Rover, but I suppose it's the same for everybody, so. I guess compared to some of these world cars, it is a bit of a tractor, isn't it, Sam? Those stages this afternoon must have been pretty tough. Is it a case of go fast in the morning, get your position safe there, and then just get through the afternoon? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Matthew generally just goes at one, you know, one pace anyway. We don't like to try and push 
hard or you know, just go as we go sort of thing but this afternoon when it were a case of just rain it back a bit get round dodge up ruts where we could and try not to get stuck in them like a few cars have done I think Well you certainly did a good job of that and you also did a good job of scaring some pretty fast machinery today well done first place in the Silver Star the championship's looking good at this stage Yeah one more to go Paul so hopefully keep it cross for that Thank you Cheers. Thanks very much Cheers Alan, Gav I know that you've not had the best of times in the Escort so far but second place to Matthew Robinson here on the Jukeries is a pretty good result isn't it? Um, better if we were closer to him. I think it's quite a gap, but uh, we've had a fraught day. The stages have been horrendous. Uh, take my hat off to him. He's obviously been really trying when it's been really tricky. I mean, the mud has been so deep at bits. Uh, been so near to being off a few times. We get some gearbox problems in the last stage. They were getting first instead of reverse. The wee yeah. detent bits come out. So I'm going to have a, a nasty phone call to the man with the four-speed gearbox this week. <laughs> Well, Gav, we have talked already today about this, but it looks like we might see you back in that cadet sooner rather than later. But still, to be doing this in the Escort is, is good, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's not the cadet. I mean, the cadet's not a historic car. It's an open-class car, so you can do a lot more modifications to it. Uh, but the, we, we're starting to get better results with the Escort. We're, we're learning the Escort, but uh, still looking forward to the cadet, hopefully end of next year. And talking of good results, to come second to the man who got a fourth overall time today in a Silver Star car is, is not bad going. I think you've had a good day. Yeah, well, we're here. We've survived. Yeah, you've survived. You're in second <laughs> place. Well done, guys. Great result. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. Nick, Steve, a bit of damage on the car, but I think this goes down as a, a good day's rallying in Nottinghamshire. Yeah, yeah we've a, a fraught day, but... Uh puncture, misfire as usual I don't, every time I speak to you I have a misfire but yeah it's been a good event, slippy a uh, bit of driver error now and again but uh, must have done alright to be stood here. Definitely, I'm normally driving when I get blamed for misfires but I mean given the company that you are keeping on this podium Steve I think you would have taken this at the beginning of the day looking at that weather earlier. Absolutely Paul really really really, really good I mean because the day had gone so so badly, coming come to a service, first in class, my god amazing but uh, and, and um, eighth of it all in the Silver Star but it's looking good now so well, it's, it's third in the points. Happy days yeah, happy days, great. Great result well done guys, great to see a different podium. Good Paul, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew Robinson strengthens his points in the championship here in the BTRDA Silver Star category. Great to see Alan McDowell and Nick Dobson here on the podium as well. Next up, it's Gold Star here on Special Stage. In the Gold Star there will be a few small changes, starting with David May and Alex Kirk Wiley now moving up to round off the top 10 at the end of the event. Tony Carinanti and Martin Oscarin manage a place gained at the end of the event into ninth. A good finish considering they damaged the car only a week previous on another rally. Unfortunately we lose Ben Cressy and Mark Swallow on their local event in the final stage. They crash the car and end up on their roof. Bad luck, especially as they were only limping through the stage at the time. Pete Smith and Patrick Walsh have a good run and slowly climb the results to end the event in 8th place. As well as taking 2nd in the B13 class, Pete getting some good times out of that Metro 6R4 now. And it would be a great championship debut for Tom Preston. Co-driver Jamie Forrest of course used to being out in the 1400s and no stranger to these stages. 7th overall was theirs today and they also take the B13 class win. It was a problematic start for Roland Llewellyn and Jamie Edwards but it turned into something much better with a 6th place finish. The N4 battle was a good one this weekend but they had to settle for 4th this time out. Taking 3rd of the Group N runners meanwhile were Russ Thompson and Andrew Murphy. The pair have had their fair share of near misses on the stages so this was a great finish and cements their lead as well at the top of the championship points. Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence end the event second in the class and miss out on the win by just 12 seconds. It had been a close battle all weekend and of course they finished just outside the podium in fourth place too. So for local man Jamie Anderson and Chris Brooks on the 2014 debut it will be the final place on the podium here at the Jukeries. And with it the group end victory. The pair held a good pace all day and showed that time away wasn't going to slow them down. Well it was a great debut for the new car in the hands of Stephen Petch 
and Ian Windrus. It may not be quite on the pace of the Focus, but it certainly wasn't far off. And 29 seconds at the end of the rally was a great start to the rest of the season in this brand new car. But that means it's another Ford at the top. Steve Perez and Paul Spooner with win number two in 2014. There was still some way to go to get further up the championship points this season, but with four rounds remaining, anything was possible. So at the end of a very uncharacteristic and very slippery, tricky Dukeries rally, here's a reminder of the overall results. Guys, today wasn't easy, particularly in the conditions though you wouldn't believe it now, but first place on the home rally, that's got to be a, a reason to smile. Yeah, we were lucky, lucky, lucky. We had a big off on the third stage. Um, I'm sure you'll show it on the on the TV uh, and I thought that was it. it was the end of the rally I can't believe how strong this car is we're very very lucky and then of course uh, Dave Wester was chasing chasing hard and we didn't really know until until after the last stage that uh, David gone out so we we're still still pushing we had we had two big moments on the last stage as well so it's been a very tricky rally I think, Paul, given the conditions, particularly on the Dukeries with the long straights and having to break for 90s, was this one of those events where you were pressing the imaginary brake pedal on the footrest? No, I just let him get on with it. There's nothing I can do about that. But no, it, it's today has been incredible for all the crews out there, really, because the, the level of grip has been so inconsistent. And when you're 120 mile an hour coming into squares and hairpins and things and you're bang and then it's grip and then no grip and grip and no grip, you know, these, these guys have had it tough today. Yeah, and so have you. And you know what? You've come through first place against some tough opposition. The championship points aren't looking too bad either, Steve. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, we're just waiting to see what happens if Birdie comes back. <laughs> <laughs> well, after your claim before that we put out on air, I'm sure Birdie will be back to defend those points desperately. So we'll look forward to that. Well done. Today is yours. Great. Cheers, Paul. Thanks ever so much. Cheers. Stephen, Ian, new car, second place here on the Dukeries. You would have taken that, wouldn't you? I uh, most, most certainly would have, yeah. It's been a, been a really good first event in it. Learning all day, obviously, in really, really tricky conditions, but uh, yeah, well happy with the car. Just could do with a few extra brake horsepower, I think, at times today, but faultless other than that. The entry was tough today. The conditions tested you as well. And uh, I was speaking to you earlier, Ian, it was quite difficult stopping the car in places. Yeah, it certainly was. Sometimes you were trying to carry the speed through the corner and the car would just completely take off on its own accord. The front wouldn't turn in, so you were just praying for a bank or something yeah. softish just to get you back on track and continue up the road. But uh, the little car like that, without as much torque as a Focus, you, you sat there sort of trying to struggle to get your traction and pull away from the real tight stuff. But awesome fun. Look, the win once again has just eluded you, but second place, the championship is looking good and that's what it's all about. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Paul. Thank you. Jamie, Chris, considering the company you've been keeping and particularly the cars on the podium this weekend, I think you've done a pretty good job today. Yeah, we've kept them at key. You know, we've uh, done a good job. We've had eight months out, so today was a bit of a warm-up, really, to see what we can do. Um, and again, hopefully we'll be here doing more stuff this year. This is your local event. It would have been rude not to come out for a play, but can we expect to see you on the BTRDA then in coming months? Yeah, definitely. You know, we're going to do a few more things and probably come out a few more times this year. Yeah. Um, 
but we'll see how it goes from here really to see what it was it was just one of those spur of the moment we thought a couple of weeks ago oh we'll jump an entry in for that actually Chris at the time was in Las Vegas on his honeymoon <laughs> so you know it was just one of those things we thought oh we'll go have a quick go and have a crack at it and look where we are today yeah well look where you are indeed Chris you wouldn't believe it now but the weather earlier was less than ideal for rallying particularly on the Dukeries I think so how did it go? Uh, yeah, it was pretty uh, hair-raising this morning. We were, had a bit of a sweat on with the mud and conditions, so it wasn't very easy. It's only our second rally together, so not the easiest of things, but we had a good result on the Tempest and a, a brilliant result today, so hopefully many more. You said it, it is a brilliant result. Well done. Podium here at the Dukeries. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So Steve Ferris strengthens his championship campaign on his home rally here at the Dukeries. It's first place for Steve and Paul. Great result for Stephen Petch and Ian Windress in that R5 Plus Fiesta. And good to see that although they have a new car, they will still be on the pace and still in the fight for the rest of this season. And Jamie Anderson in third place. Really good result for him. And a great podium here at the Dukeries. If Paul Bird comes out to play, you heard Steve Perez say it. The fight will definitely be on. But I tell you what, this championship is shaping up to be one of the best yet. Join us next time on Special Stage for the Nicky Griss stages. Oh.